Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus A330 pilot and in today's video let's talk about the flight control track and how to execute it correctly since in many many cases when I'm reviewing some YouTube videos of flights and was flying I see flight control tracks done incorrectly. So let's get into it. We've just completed our pushback and our engine start. The after start checklist has been completed and at this point we have two options either do the flight control check now or delay it to a later point during the taxi now every airline will have their own sop there in my airline it is sop that normally if we don't have a reason to do the flight control check during taxi and fuel economy is no reason there you can do it before you start the taxi so we could do it right now However, if we have a tight slot or if, for example, an airport closure is impending due to curfew, then we could do the flight control check during the taxi. The easiest option is, of course, to do it now because now you can easily go heads down without having to worry about taxiing the aircraft, etc. So let's assume that we are going to do the flight control check now. And then at a later stage in the video, we'll talk about some of the precautions and requirements for doing it later during the taxi procedure. But let's start with the actual check itself. So the ECAM is automatically going to switch to the flight control page when I move the aircraft's controls. Do note that moving the controls does not include the tiller, but it does include the rudder paddles. And this is of course only if no page has been selected fixed down on the ECAM control panel. Alright, so we now have decided that we are going to do the flight control check now before we start the taxi, which should be the default option. Again, some airlines also do it during taxi as SOP because of course it saves a little bit of fuel, a couple of kilos on every flight, which can make a difference if you're operating 300 aircraft. In any case, so how is the check correctly executed? The flight crew technique manual clearly details that the pilot flying is going to do the input silently and the pilot monitoring, or the pilot monitoring, that's the correct term, is going to make the call out when the full travel of the control is reached. So let's go ahead and give this a go. We're going to start by going full up. So I'm now taking my side stick full up and we check that the elevators, both of them, move to the full up position. Be sure that you leave them there for a short time so that the computers have sufficient time to detect any fault that may occur. Imagine if the elevators can't reach the full travel for whatever reason. Let's say because someone threw a stone into the elevator. You name it, anything can happen. Then we need to leave the controls at that position for a sufficient amount of time so that the computers can detect the possible fault. Then we go full down, again check for the full and correct travel and then back into neutral. Now let's do the same on the aileron axis and you will notice on the aileron axis that it will take the control surfaces quite a while and this is where I see the most common mistake of flight simmers that they just do the check something like this. And this would be an incorrectly executed flight control check. So let's do it correctly now. We go full left, wait until the controls are at the fully displaced position, then full right, also check for the spoiler movement, check for the full displacement of the controls, and then you go back into the neutral position. When that is done, we are going to check the rudder. And there are two important things that you got to think about when you are executing the rudder check. If you're flying an Airbus, you want to press the pedal disconnect button. What that does is it disconnects the rudder pedals from the nose wheel steering that you normally have available. So normally you can move the nose wheel by about uh, 7 degrees left and right by moving the rudder pedals. Pressing the pedal disconnect button is going to prevent that. So now that we have prevented that, after all, you don't want that nose wheel just rubbing along, do you? Now we can check the rudder, and we do this slowly. So, slow and smooth input. Come on. 
slow and smooth input, especially when reaching maximum deflection. That's very important because the rudder is a huge surface. If that slams into the maximum position, the passengers are gonna hear that in the back and they will probably be slightly worried about what that loud thump sound came from. Then we are gonna move slowly into the other direction. This is a good speed to do it, by the way. Again, check for full travel and then back to neutral. When we're done with that, we release the pedal disconnect button and now the other pilot is going to do the same check. Now, if you're flying a Boeing aircraft and not an Airbus aircraft, then the typical procedure to prevent the nose wheel from scratching over the ground on a stationary aircraft or to prevent the aircraft from moving sideways when doing the check is to grab the tiller and hold it fixed in position. You will notice that normally when you are using your pedal steering, the Boeing tiller is going to move slightly and by holding it in position, you will prevent the nose wheel from moving. So these are the considerations for when you are doing the flight control track when the aircraft is stationary. Now let's have a look at what's different when the aircraft is moving. Now the biggest difference is that you got to ensure that the pilot flying stays heads up. So you've always got to look outside as pilot flying. Always stay heads up. Only the pilot monitoring is going to look inside the aircraft. Now next up we got to ensure that our speed is below 10 knots, that's a safety requirement by Airbus, and the auto brake must not be armed. So some pilots start rolling for taxi and then immediately carry out the taxi procedure and arm the auto brake. Don't do that. Just don't do that. The reason we don't do it is because with the auto brake armed under certain circumstances, when the spoilers are getting deployed during the aileron track, the auto brakes might trigger and apply maximum braking, thinking that you're trying to abort a takeoff. Now, there are a couple of safety barriers built in, but it has happened in the past, and therefore it's most important that you are careful with this and don't arm the auto brake before the flight control track is complete. Only when the flight control track is actually complete that's when you can um, the auto brake, respectively, engage the uh, max mode. Now, let's revise that, or let's summarize it. Ensure that you are at or below 10 knots of taxi speed, and ensure that the auto brake is not armed. It is recommendable to do the check when you're going in a straight line, because obviously you have to grab a couple controls, pay attention to what's going on, so you most certainly don't want to have to touch the side stick and the tiller at the same time while going through a turn. Well, and that's everything there is to it. So I showed you the check very, very slowly because obviously we had to discuss everything as it was going on. Now, let's drive that next turn. And once it is completed, we are going to have a look at how a correct speed for the flight control check would look like. Now, remember, we got to ensure that our controls reach the maximum deflection and have a short amount of time staying there so that the flight control computers have their chance to detect any possible fault that may occur within the flight control system. All right. Let's go ahead and give this a go. So we're in a straight line, the speed is below 10 and the auto brake is not armed, so flight control check. Full up, full down, neutral. Full left, full right, neutral. And I already showed you the rudder exactly as it is supposed to uh, look like. So, that's everything you gotta know about the flight control track. I do hope you found this one interesting. Be sure to leave your feedback in the comments underneath the video. And if you've got any questions, put them in there as well. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, 
don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a like within the video itself. And if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me a Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.